welcome back everyone to the Sea Science Series. That's Mark. And that's Saoirse and we hope you've been enjoying the adventure so far. We've loved it. Oh yeah. With Stahl in there, get on with the third episode, will you? Okay, alright. <laughs> <laughs> the ocean is a driving force for weather and climate. And weather refers to short term atmospheric conditions. Look out the window, that's weather. It's probably raining. It is raining. <laughs> Weather is different in different parts of the world and changes over minutes, hours, days and weeks. Climate describes what weather is like over a long period of time in a specific area. And different regions can have different climates. It's the average weather conditions that occur over a long period, like really long, talking averages over many years in a particular place. Weather tells you if you need to wear a raincoat today. Climate tells you if you need to rethink your entire wardrobe. As they say, climate is what you expect, weather is what you get. Who says that? I don't know. People. The ocean and climate are very closely linked. The ocean plays a crucial role in the global climate system in a number of ways. These include absorbing excess heat from the atmosphere, mm -hmm. as we've seen in episode one and two, mm -hmm. regulating our temperature, acting almost like the Earth's air conditioning system, ah. warming in the winter and cooling in the summer. But ocean heat is at record levels, causing widespread marine heat waves, threatening its rich ecosystems and killing coral reefs around the world. The ocean also absorbs around 30% of the carbon dioxide mm. added to the atmosphere by human activity and helps mitigate the impacts of climate change. Oh. Absorbing additional CO2 is increasing the acidity of seawater. And this process is known as ocean acidification. Let's take a closer look at it. To show the effects of excess CO2 on ocean acidification, we're going to use a pH indicator. Ocean acidification is the decrease of the ocean's pH level. pH stands for potential of hydrogen. The pH scale is a measure of how acidic or alkaline a substance is. An example of an acidic substance would be vinegar, and an example of an alkaline substance would be baking soda or bleach. Ooh. The scale ranges from 0 to 14, with 0 being highly acidic, 7 being neutral, and then 10 to 14 being highly alkaline. So let's show how it works. Here we have three glasses of water, which we've added some pH indicator to, and this one is our neutral one, so the water is there. It's kind of a slight a bit blue. blue. Yeah, so that shows us it's neutral but slightly alkaline. We've added vinegar to this one, and you can see it's kind of yellowy. It's like a darkish orange, yellow, yellow, yeah, darkish yellowy orange. Which means it's acidic. Ooh, and we've added some bleach to this one, and it's a uh, like a purple, yeah, a bluey light, purple. yeah, bluey purple, which shows us that it's alkaline. Oh yeah, look at that. And um, we used pH indicator, but at home you can use red cabbage Put. water. The red cabbage water down. Stinks. Red cabbage is red because it contains a chemical called anthocyanin. Like me mate, Anto. <laughs> which, <laughs> which, <laughs> which changes. <laughs> which changes you colour go. depending on the pH value. Don't open it. <laughs> so let's see what happens to water as it absorbs excess CO2. For that, all we need is a big breath of air. <laughs> all right. Now that I've caught my breath, when we breathe, we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Trees do the opposite, taking in carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. So let's see what the carbon dioxide in my lungs does to the pH value of the water, which we'll know by the change in color. So I'll use a straw. And I'll put a white background behind it so okay. we can see. Lovely, so all I need to do is take a big breath and blow through the straw into the water. Keep an eye on the color of the water. What do you think will happen? It will explode! <laughs> Hopefully not. Okay. So the CO2 in my lungs has lowered the pH value of the water. Making it more acidic. Yeah, and a slightly yellowish, light yeah, yellow colour. Yellow, yeah. Okay, human activities and the burning of fossil fuels are releasing too much carbon dioxide into the air, which is increasing the level of CO2 in our oceans. And who lives in the ocean? We do! Me and my friend Bill. All right, <laughs> let's scale this up. This will be our ocean. Let's do one each. Let's add some pH indicator. The colour scale tells us it's slightly alkaline. We're going to take a deep breath in and blow through the straw into the water to see what effect the CO2 in our lungs has on the pH value of the water. Do you think it'll get more alkaline or more acidic? It will explode! Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Come on! 
<laughs> Mine's turned uh, You can see a uh, slightish yellow again, which we know from our scale <laughs> means it's more acidic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how are you getting on there, Sushi? Yeah. <laughs> you, you keep going. So, <laughs> the, the, the CO2 in my lungs has made my water more acidic and what Saoirse doesn't know is hers just has food colouring. <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> ah, you could have been there all day. I would have been there all day. <laughs> He's some chill of that fella. Outrage. <laughs> okay, let's do it for reals reals. It turned yellow, which tells us it became more acidic. Okay, bit, bit better bit this better. time. Okay. Ocean acidification has dramatic consequences for marine life. If seawater is too acidic, it can make it difficult for marine organisms such as coral, oysters and mussels to form shells and skeletons. Yes. Ocean acidification may also impact some plankton species, which form the basis of marine food webs and would impact larger animals like fish and whales. So cop on, yeah? The impact of ocean acidification would extend up the food chain, affecting fisheries and aquaculture, threatening food security for millions of people. Mm. To understand Earth's changing climate, it's important to collect high quality data on surface ocean carbon dioxide levels. Since 2017, the Marine Institute have been measuring dissolved CO2 in Irish and Atlantic surface waters using system on board's research vessel, Celtic Explorer. The Marine Institute also conducts a research programme with NUI Galway measuring ocean acidification. As the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere increases, the level of dissolved CO2 in our oceans has increased as well. Ocean acidification makes the ocean less habitable for marine life. It can decrease the calcium carbonate minerals, which are needed to build the skeleton and shells of many marine organisms. Change in ocean chemistry can also affect the behaviour of marine species. And we can help prevent ocean acidification by reducing CO2 emissions. Having less CO2 in the air means less dissolved CO2 in the sea. About 36 billion tonnes of CO2 are added to the atmosphere each year as a result of human activities. The ocean absorbs about a quarter of these emissions, which helps slow down climate change by removing CO2 from the atmosphere, but with widespread repercussions for marine ecosystems suffering from the more acidic water. Adapting to a changing climate is one of the greatest challenges facing society, governments and decision makers worldwide. The ocean that surrounds us buffers us against extremes of climate but it's also changing itself at a rapid pace. Increase in extreme weather events, coastal flooding and sea level rise are a few of the challenges we face as a result, as you will see in the next episode. Ooh. But for now, from us and the ducks, <laughs> it's goodbye. Bye. See you now. Sorry, I dozed off there for a second. <laughs>